Welcome back to the channel. With the new update Uncharted Waters in Lens Island, I wanted to do another guide for new players similar to what I did when the game first came out a year ago. Anyways, if you're not brand new to Lens Island, then some of this info may not be new to you, but hopefully you'll learn something new today. And if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of this Lens Island content. So right off the bat, you'll notice that when you start up, you've got access to a chest where you can switch out your weapons or tools at. Not that you'll have many options in the beginning anyways, but it's not obvious, but you can deconstruct this chest to get some quick supplies. Just enter your build mode and press F to deconstruct, which you can either use to build another chest elsewhere or use to build your first home. Similar to this, you can also find ruins around the map that you can deconstruct for materials. Or if you're feeling up to it, you can restore the ruins back to its former glory. You'll notice that every time you use a weapon or a tool, a little white circle pops up. The game gives you a little tutorial about how they work, but also wanted to talk about it because it is an extremely important feature that some people still struggle with. Now when the white circle pops up, all you do is click, which seems simple, but every tool or weapon has a different swing speed, which will change how quickly these white circles pop up. Before the update, Critical Hits also had a percent chance to harvest one of the resources you were harvesting, but that has unfortunately been removed in the new update for balance reasons. The fishing pole is the only tool or weapon that has a red circle, which all that means is when it pops up, do not click anything. It's a trick circle, so if you click it, you will lose the fish. The same applies to combat as well, which is absolutely paramount to utilize to stay alive. Now I highly recommend not just blindly clicking because you're not going to be hitting crits. If you're struggling with connecting with crits, there are actual practice dummies in Bridgewater that you can practice on without fear of dying. Now after you've gathered a few resources, you'll probably notice that you run out of backpack space fairly quickly. You've got two options here to help increase how much you can store. You can either buy the next backpack upgrade, which is probably going to be too expensive if you've just started out or you can craft some storage containers where you can offload some of your wood, stone, and clay. Now I like to keep my storage containers close to my home so when I need to build something or want to expand my home bigger, it's easier for me to access. You can unlock a higher tier storage chest called the Void Chest later in the game which will allow you a much wider variety of storage options from scrap metal to iron shards, but you're likely a ways away before you can unlock that. Now speaking of using a lot of resources, do not forget to not only upgrade your town, but to build homes for your villagers because this will unlock a lot of ways you can make money in the game by selling them supplies. Once they've moved in, they'll set up shop either somewhere in the town or just north of Bridgewater at the docks. Now to get to the docks, all you do is just follow the road north out of the town and you should find the fisherman and the traveling merchant. Now speaking of villagers, there is a mysterious villager that you do not have to build a home for to get her to move in but follows a specific schedule, so if you miss her, you'll have to wait till the next day to find her again. She only sets up shop in Bridgewater in the evenings in the house sort of just south of the main square. She will buy your void essence if you find yourself overflowing from destroying hordes of void beasts in the caves and can even recover your lost items if you've recently died in combat. There's also an option to reset your skill points if you think you want to try around the different perks. Lens Island handles hunger probably the best way possible in any survival game that I've played and that survival doesn't depend on you managing your hunger. I personally really love building my home and hate the fact that some games make me have to constantly eat food while all I'm trying to do is passively build my home. So early game, do not feel like you have to keep your hunger up at all times because all that will happen is your health will drop to 50% and stay there. With that said, if you plan on going into the caves, you will definitely want to eat food to keep your health up or else you'll probably die pretty quickly. You'll probably notice that you have a wide variety of special resources to craft, everything from new weapons to just basic decorations when home building. Glass can be gathered from bottles washed up on the beaches. Scrap metal is gathered from barrels that have washed ashore or from barrels in the caves. Iron shards are gathered from iron nodes in the caves. And sapphires have a small chance to drop from clay resources when mined, which are valuable to be sold. Which brings me to the workbench. This is basically where you will be crafting new weapons and tools from the very resources that I just mentioned. The workbench also comes with a built-in chest that you can use to swap out your weapons and tools. Also, you'll probably notice the upgrade workbench level option towards the top, which is how you gain access to not only new weapons and tools, but new ships and farming equipment. You really always need to be looking to upgrade your workbench as soon as possible, because the unlocks you get from that will help you later on in the game. Now, I'm not going to touch on it too much because the in-game tutorial guides you through building your first home, but I wanted to show you a quick little shack you can build that not only is cheap to craft, but can be built in mere seconds so you can sleep through the night to progress to the next day. Now, I certainly recommend having your own main home that's cozy and keeps your Lynn happy, but when you're out exploring and you get caught in the dark, what do you do? First and foremost, always make sure you're carrying around extra resources because while it is cheap to craft, 
It sucks when you realize you're short four wood and you have to stumble through the eerie dark wood to find a tree you can cut down. Now all you have to do is throw down a foundation, two arches, and a ceiling. Complete it with a bed and boom. You can quickly sleep and deconstruct it in the next morning and continue exploring. While you're getting your house built, you're going to want to also build a farm as well. This will not only be the place where you can grow food to eat to heal you, but also where you can grow flower seeds which you can sell to Steph for a little early money. Now in exploring, you have about roughly a 10% chance when harvesting wildflowers to get a seed which can be planted to grow a flower from, which can be used endlessly to grow your farm. Now if you want, you can actually buy seeds from Steph to go ahead and get a little jump start to your farm. You'll need to have a watering can though to grow crops, which can be filled at a well or by walking into a body of water with your can equipped. I like to build my farms in squares of four because if you stand in just the right spot, you can actually water all four farms with one water use, which means less trips to fill your can though. Now your early game farm will be mainly a combination of blueberries, pumpkins, pear trees, and different flowers, but later on you'll be able to grow everything from grapes on lattices to olive and olive trees. You'll just have to keep exploring to find these more rare crops. Anyways, that should get you just about started in the new Lens Island update, Uncharted Waters. If you have any tips you think would be helpful for a new player, please drop them in the comment section below so we can all help each other out. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, YouTube.